first thing he said was, he was alive. Preston was shot in the abdomen, chest, and um, had multiple life-threatening injuries. He had a pancreatic injury, a heart laceration, he had a colon injury. It looked really bad. I didn't think Preston was gonna make it. I really didn't. It looked so bad that he was just hanging on by a threat. After being there just a couple of minutes, he started to lose consciousness. At that time, we decided to uh, intubate him or put a breathing tube in him, um, establish IV access and with his wounds with the plan of taking him up to the operating room. Immediately after he was intubated, he lost all vital signs. He didn't have a blood pressure, didn't have a pulse. Um, so he effectively died. Um, at that point in time, uh, the decision was made by me to uh, open his chest. So I did a procedure called a resuscitative thoracotomy. I uh, made an incision, opened his chest in the emergency department. Uh, was able to get in there and put a clamp across his aorta. The timing of decisions and the ability to have the things you need as you may or may not change course is really what contributes to that patient's survival. My entire family was there, my sisters, my brothers, they came from everywhere and my sister said, I got a feeling he's going to come out of this. I've got this feeling he's going to come out of this. I mean, she really had that feeling. And so we waited and waited and then an hour later, doctor said, he turned around, he's not in danger anymore. Well, we spend a lot of time with the family educating them on what's going on and even being a shoulder to cry on. I mean, his mom was having a really hard time at the bedside. She was alone most of the time. And um, we just spend a lot of time talking to them. And, and for Preston, just spend a lot of time reassuring him. Every You know, he, he was awake, he would open his eyes. And even during when he was really sick, at the beginning when he was so sick, he would, he looked really scared. There were times I thought they were trying to heal me. There were times I had my little moments where I would break down or I um, couldn't stand to be in the room or I leave or I talked to a nurse or I talked to maybe somebody that, I talked to a pastor here, so I did. I had my moments where I had to go sit down and talk to somebody. Because the pancreatic head and the duodenum were effectively devastated by this gunshot wound, the decision was made to proceed with a pancreatic duodenectomy, um, otherwise known as a Whipple procedure, which is extremely complicated. Technically, we use that mostly with, the, uh, with uh, removing tumors from the duodenum or the pancreas. And you have to remove the duodenum, the head of the pancreas, the end part of the bile duct, and then the maybe the end of the stomach sometimes. So we do that to take out a tumor usually, and um, once, it's, once that's been removed, then we uh, use sutures to um, reconnect all those things we've disconnected. Now, of course, we disconnect them on purpose when there's a tumor. Uh, this was not so much on purpose. I just feel like I met so many good people here. Took real good care of me. And Dr. Beanie could have been like any other doctor and just said, well, he's gone. There's no point in bringing him back. He just took the chance. I'm able to tell my story. When you take care of these patients and you've put everything into it, they become part of you. How can you stop, give up on yourself? The pay, you become one in the same in many ways. Um, the, the relationship with that patient is, is special. Um, the question maybe shouldn't be, 
how do you stay with it or how do you persist? It is should be, how does anyone not? It's very rewarding to see someone after they leave the intensive care knowing that they're doing well and knowing that, you know, we made that happen. I mean, he, there were many times, I can't count how many, that we didn't think he would survive and that Dr. Beanie had to talk to his mom about not possibly surviving and 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 he was a fighter so he, he's doing well. He had a positive attitude. He smiled, he was appreciative, he was happy that he was alive. He really got the fact that he died and this was truly a second chance. And to this day, he has something about him when, when I talk to him, it just, it lights you up. He's a special man. And I really hope that someday and believe that uh, through these experiences, he's gonna go on to um, help others or do something that's good that's gonna come out of this difficult time that he's gone through for now over a year and a half. These tears are tears of joy because um, the team here saved my life. And, feel like I gave me a second chance to just just to become a better person and just just another chance of life just get to be here with my son just see him see his birthdays Christmas Thanksgiving yeah these are tears of joy it's a great feeling knowing I'm not going to a cemetery looking at my son's grave because some others didn't get that second chance like I did and I'm grateful for that. I really am.